A curious feature about the fort at Bijapur is that no single building is identified as the fort. It is the entire fortified city that is recognized as the killer. The city is protected by a thick rampart. The walls run around a circumference of about 10 kilometers. Only five gates provide entry to the city and these are in turn protected by large cannons placed on more than 96 towers. Another interesting feature about Bijapur Fort is that it is not built at a height unlike other forts in India but is at the ground level with the surrounding countryside. And perhaps this is the reason it was considered it necessary to fortify the whole city and treat it like a fort. Because of its cultural and architectural riches, Bijapur is often called the Agra of the Deccan. It is in the state of Karnataka, about 450 kilometers away from Hyderabad. Some 900 years ago, the Chalukyas had built a small fort here that was later occupied by the Yadavs, Kiljis and Tughlaqs. After the disintegration of the Bamani Sultanate, it fell into the hands of Yusuf Adil Shah, who laid the foundations of the fort as it stands today. The reign of the Adil Shahi Sultans is considered to be a golden period in the history of the Deccan. They were entirely free from communal prejudice or sectarian dogmatism and greatly respected poets, painters, musicians, mystics and saints. Many of the rulers were accomplished scholars and talented musicians. From 1489 to 1686, uh, in all uh, nine sultans ruled uh, over Bijapur. Uh, they were politically uh, very uh, powerful and culturally rich. They contributed a lot uh, for the development of a uh, Deccanic culture. The fortified wall that guards the city covers a circumference of about 10 kilometers with six gates allowing entry. Roads lead from these gates to the main citadel built in the heart of the city. The walls are high and strong. A wide and deep moat runs along the wall, presenting a formidable obstacle. One hundred twenty bastions we have in Bijapur. Uh, One hundred twenty big guns were there over those bastions. Particular area or a particular length of a fort or wall or bastions, some bastions were uh, entrusted for the construction to a particular uh, noble. As per his strength, as per his wealth, and because of his uh, resources, uh, he had constructed. Because of this reason, different types of the designs uh, in uh, different bastions, even fort wall, uh, you will find in uh, Bijapur. It is not a uniform fort. There are enormous, the size and scale of the cannons are absolutely phenomenal and were obviously so important that each one of the cannons actually has a name and there are bastions for specific cannons where they could swivel and the range was tested. A large cannon named Malka Medan, literally meaning Empress of the Battlefield, is placed atop the tower known as Sharjah Burj. This cannon was used in the Battle of Talaikota that ended in the decisive defeat of the Vijayanagar Empire. In the middle of the 16th century, two major powers confronted each other in the Deccan. On one side was the Hindu kingdom of Vijayanagar and on the other were the allied forces of the Sultans of Bidar, Bijapur, Gulbarga and Golconda. Finally, 
Vijayanagar was vanquished. Ali Adil Shah first uh, who ruled Bijapur from 1558 to 1580. As a result of uh, his victory against uh, Ram Raja of uh, the Vijayanagar Kingdom uh, in the year uh, 1565 in the Battle of Talikota, he secured enor enormous wealth. Plenty of wealth uh, uh, came to Bijapur Kingdom. Because of uh, this reason, uh, he took uh, two giant projects in Bijapur, one uh, construction of a Jamia Mosque and uh, another construction of a big fort. The largest mosque in the city is the Jama Masjid that stretches over 16,000 square feet and has enough space for over 5,000 faithful to pray together. The high dome of the mosque has a beautifully decorated arch. Emphasis given to the construction of religious buildings, courtyards of the mosques were expanded, the fortifications were rebuilt. So there was a very, very strong statement of spiritual and temporal as the Sultan settled. Rows of ornate pillars separate the courtyard of the mosque from the gallery. The interior space has been utilized very well by arranging it into five galleries that lead up to the Qibla. The mosque was decorated with gold paint in the 17th century during the reign of Sultan Muhammad Adil Shah. building of the minarets, the Jama Masjids, these were all statements of victory. And these were all built as they, as indications and indicators of their successes in war. Adil Shah the first commissioned the Gagan Mahal to commemorate the victory of Talai Kota. He was revered as a Sufi saint by the populace. Indeed, he was a man of many talents, a mathematician, musician, poet and artist. There is a large hall to the rear, but it lies in ruins today. Adil Shahi Hukumarano ne yaha ki tehzeeb o tamaddun ke liye bahar se ulmai kram ko, architects ko, aur fane tamir ke fankaron ko bulaya aur is shahar ko ek alimi ahishiyat se usse bana huaya. During the period of Ibrahim Adil Shah II, many buildings were constructed to serve as places of pleasure. Jal Mahal, also called Jal Mandir, a five-storied mansion in Hindu style, is prominent among these. Saat Manzil was built according to the command of Ibrahim II to sport with his beloved Ramba 
and though only five of the original seven stories towering over 30 meters high survive, their remains bear ample testimony to the taste of the Sultan who had the interiors painted in gold. Because of intermixture of uh, different communities and uh, ethnic groups, uh, a different uh, kind of uh, uh, culture developed. That culture uh, uh, goes in history as a Bijapur culture. The Deccani painting style evolved between the 14th and 15th centuries. Earlier works in these miniatures clearly show Central Asian influence while Mughal courtly imprint is discernible in later specimens. The Deccani school presents a beautiful blend of Hindu-Islamic and Persian styles. The Adil Shahi rulers of Bijapur, like their contemporary Mughals in the north, were very ambitious builders. And this city is full of majestic monuments, ruins of palaces, majestic mosques and towering domes that bear testimony to the glorious era of construction. Work on Ibrahim Raza was started by the Sultan as a mausoleum for his wife Begum Taj Sultana. Later, he himself was buried here together with some members of the family. This is the reason why it is known by his name. The minarets here are 24 meters tall and it is said that they provided the inspiration for the minarets of the Taj Mahal. This building is considered to be an excellent example of Turco-Ottoman architecture. A stone inscription found in the compound boasts, When this edifice raised its head from the ground, it seemed a new heaven was being unveiled. Gardens of Paradise appear to have borrowed their beauty from this place. The mosque is an integral part of Ibrahim Raza. Ibrahim II was an accomplished musician, worshipper of Ganesh, and was bestowed with the title of Jagat Guru in recognition of his philosophical scholarship and Sufi mystic pursuits. The buildings in Bijapur were inspired and influenced by Bahmani architecture, but evolved to a much greater refinement here. The onion-shaped domes here appear to be emerging out of lotus flowers. The Adil Shahi rulers of Bijapur never maintained any distance between themselves and their people. They adopted the local language, the costume and cuisine. They intermarried with the local people and encouraged the use of Marathi in the courts. Relatively better protected from invaders than their contemporaries in the north, they could patronize generously art, literature and music. 
many of them were themselves very talented people. For instance, Ibrahim Adil Shah II, who composed poems and composed an anthology called Kitab e Navras. He also underwent systematic training in the Drupal style of singing. Some were disciples of Sufi saints, and they could very easily encourage the evolution of a culture here in Deccan that is a priceless heritage of all Indians. It was Ibrahim who founded the city of Navraspur, conceived as a twin city of Bijapur, where he composed Kitab e Navras, an impressive treatise on aesthetics. The settlement was destroyed brutally when Malik Ambar invaded it, and only ruins remain to tell the tale of this remarkable flight of fancy of a sovereign who dreamt of a river of music bathing his subjects every moment of their lives. Their rule is also an interesting example of not only of benevolence and political justice, but also a tremendous urge on the part of the rulers to develop a composite culture. The Adil Shahis of Bijapur represented a very interesting um, um, character of India's cosmopolitan uh, uh, history. <laughs> Each Adil Shahi Sultan vied with his predecessors to build on an even grander scale. Structures that came up later are much more ornate. Asar Mahal was built as a courthouse by Adil Shah II. Muhammad Shah rebuilt and decorated it with paintings in the 17th century. A painter from Italy was specially invited for this task, who contributed flower vases and portraits with European features. The building was given this name because the holy hair of the Prophet was kept here. This grand dome at Bijapur is one of the world's most famous buildings. It is reckoned among the largest domes ever built and of course it is claimed that is a single cellular construction. It is unique. Nothing like this has ever been attempted anywhere else. And although its walls are quite plain, not ornately decorated like those of other buildings in Bijapur, in sheer grandeur of conception and expertise of execution, it is quite unique. <laughs> Work on the Gol Gumbad was started by Muhammad Shah, the successor of Ibrahim II, who was aware that to match the Ibrahim Raza was not an easy task. He decided to concentrate on grandeur. The diameter of the outer dome is 37 meters and the circle has been set in a square of 60 meters. Octagonal minarets have been placed on four corners, topped with small cupolas. The hall enclosed by the dome is square and 60 meters high. The ceiling of the grand dome is awe-striking. A gallery runs round at a height of 35 meters. 
the smallest sound creates not one or two, but eleven or twelve echoes. This is where the graves of the Sultan, his young wife Urus Begum, beloved Ramba, and grandchild are situated. A kind of a very strong physical symbol of what would happen to human existence anyway. And there is a desire to touch the divine and um, aspects of the utterly mundane, the very earthy uh, but very noble and uh, sort of ennobling, uh, trying to touch the sky as it were and remain rooted uh, in the earth. I mean, these are all aspects which are commonly shared by humanity all over. Ali Adil Shah was a talented poet and a generous patron of artists. He had designed an elegant mausoleum for himself that couldn't be completed in his lifetime. Today, called the Bara Kaman, literally 12 arches. This is reckoned to be among the most beautiful ruins in the city. It was really their consolidated wealth that attracted the Mughals. Although Akbar did not move as far as uh, destabilizing the Deccan Sultanates, it, it, it was Aurangzeb who sought to consolidate the Deccan, finally demolished the Deccan Sultanate. The pressure of the Mughal armies on the Deccan became unbearable by the 17th century. Aurangzeb's campaigns had started in his father's lifetime. This was the time when Bijapur had to face harrowing raids by the Marathas. Its power and prosperity declined sharply. The last ruler of Bijapur was made a prisoner by Aurangzeb and sent off to Daltabad where he breathed his last. ऐसा शहर था एक बहुत खूबसूरत शहर बीजापुर हमारे बाप दादा जो बोलते थे उस दौर में बोलते आए हैं इतना खूबसूरत है कि कुछ पूछो मत जैसा कि हमारे अरबस्तान में हमारे उस उस जमाने में दादाओं ने जैसा मदीने को पसंद करते थे वैसा बीजापुर में हमारे वली अल्लाह जो बीजापुर को पसंद करते थे आज मुमलुक जो नहीं रहा बीजापुर शहर वैसा नहीं रहा आज ये बीजापुर की पूरी खूबसूरती चली गई अभी Bijapur is changing fast, with changing times. A burgeoning population and an expanding city have imperiled old buildings fit enough to be included in the list of World Heritage Monuments. Protection of this priceless legacy is a matter of national pride and a duty of all citizens. Even greater is the challenge to preserve the legacy of communal harmony and fusion of cultures that Bijapur stands for.